Cheers, guys. Epix here. Welcome to the first episode of 2019. Now, this isn't going to be a traditional VR show. Instead, it is a look forward, a look into hardware and gaming slash experiences that I'm looking forward to in VR. I want to hear what you're looking forward to in the comments below. It can be hardware. It can be games. I don't care. Let me know. I want to start things off with one of each. Now, these are the top the single top game I'm looking forward to in VR and the single piece of hardware I'm looking forward to. After that, it's just a bunch of stuff I'm looking forward to, but no real order to it, right? So I want to start things off with the number one piece of VR hardware that I'm looking forward to. Had you asked me this four months ago, my answer would have been different. But right now, today, it's Oculus Quest. Now I'm talking about a mobile solution that for the first time, and that is saying much, supports dual six degree of freedom controllers. That's something we haven't yet experienced in a mobile VR solution. It has resolution that is, you know, right up at the forefront. It has tracking that hopefully is slightly better than PlayStation VR, probably won't live up to Rift or Vive, but it's gonna be better than what we've experienced in mobile to date. It's gonna have a really good library of support right off the bat. In fact, if I could think of one negative, guys, it would be really just the processor. So I've got a new phone. It's a Note 9. It has a Snapdragon 845, which is what I wish they would have put in this. Instead, they went with an 835. Fair enough, I get it. They're that far into the fabrication slash manufacturing process. They can't swap it out. We get the 835. So really, that's about it. The rest, I'm super keen on. Now, what did this replace? Pimax. And I mentioned this before. The issue I have with the Pimax and why my opinions changed is, look, my issue with those first three reviews that came out, despite the hard work that went into them, I know it did, I felt there was a certain level of innate bias that kind of crept in, right? When you work with a company that closely for month after month, bias starts to creep in. Despite the best of intentions, it creeps in. You start making allowances. You know these team members. You believe Sally, John, Jim in development. They're going to address it. They may not, but you believe they will. You know these people. I just wasn't comfortable with those initial reviews and I'm glad I waited because now those third party reviews are starting to trickle in. We're getting more information on the distortion, for example. But the biggest faux pas for me is GPU support. Not even the current champion, the 2080 Ti, can power Pimax 5K Plus at optimal levels. Now, I'm not in a position to upgrade my 1080 Founders Edition, which surely isn't enough to power it. It can do it, but you're going to make a lot of compromises. I don't like making a lot of compromises. I'd rather have some of that eye candy turned on and not cripple the experience. So for me, the Pimax got shoved to the side. That's why you haven't heard me talk about it a lot for that reason right there. So I will probably continue to hold off until there's something that can power it or they go away, whichever comes first. So we'll see. What about games? Well, the single most exciting game for me, and it's not even a for sure, Mech Warrior 5, without hesitation. I've said it from day one, if there's one experience I want in VR, it's the ability to ride my lumbering mech to find you in your mech destroy the living bejesus out of you and your mech, have you and your mech be a rubble heap at my feet that I can salvage through for parts that I can sell to upgrade my mech at your expense. That's how the fantasy goes. Have I lost my mind? Probably. But that's what I want, and I can't wait for that. Now, I say that because they have yet to confirm there's going to be VR support. But fingers crossed, I hope there will be. That is what I want out of 2019. I want to go into 2020 having played an RPG light, lumbering Mech Warrior style game. Period, full stop. After that, it's a bunch of nice to haves, 
but no real ranking order. For example, the first one, Lone Echo 2. The first title delivered zero G in a way that made it feel convincing. Even while we're bound to the laws of gravity on planet Earth, it felt like you were in zero G. They did a fantastic job. Some complaints I had, it was a little too short. I would have liked a little bit more exploration, for example. Hopefully, Lone Echo 2 delivers on that front. Next up, Borderlands 2 VR. Now, you might be saying, Epics, what about PlayStation VR? And I'll say, what about it? Look, if that was my only platform, I would be happy to keep playing Borderlands 2 VR there, and I wouldn't say another peep, right? But much like Skyrim VR, I think the PC version is going to be slightly better. For Skyrim, it was mod support, albeit un unofficial, it supported mods. What I'm hoping for with Borderlands 2 is superior controller support. As admirable a job as the Move controllers do in Borderlands 2, they are far from what I would say is great, right? The touch controllers, the Vive Wands, able to probably deliver a much better controller experience. So I purposely kind of pulled myself back from that game to wait for a PC version. But again, if it was all I had, I'd happily continue to play it on PlayStation VR. What else? What about Stormland? What I love about this first person shooter, guys, is the alien environments. They look like no other game out there, right? It was one of the things that I loved about that game that we won't mention, um, you know, that did really bad, the space game, and then did a bunch of patching and kind of made things better. That one, yeah. Like it, it's got unique alien kind of locations and the cyborg or androids, whatever they are, the robots just look so awesome careening around that environment, right? Little jet thrusters in the feet and it just looks like a hell of a lot of fun. So Stormland, definitely on the radar. Also, Elite Dangerous. This is a game, guys, that keeps on delivering. Every year, it was never a VR game from the ground up. They added it as an afterthought, but they've always supported it. And right there, to me, that kind of gets a lot of my loyalty, right? All those awesome DLC updates, the, the Thargoids, which are back, one of my favorite, you know, nemesis kind of enemies in, in the Elite universe, all supported by VR. 2019, we don't know quite yet what that's going to mean for Elite Dangerous, but VR support will be there, and so will I to enjoy it. Can't wait. Now, this last title, guys, probably a little controversial. It is X4 Foundations. Your first thought is probably Epic's. You know, how dare you, given the abomination that was X3 Rebirth. And I would agree with you 100%. After Rebirth, I was ready to never give them a chance again. Only, I like the original X games a lot. Enough to give them a second chance. And I'm glad I tried out X4 Foundations because it goes back to basics. It is the sandbox space game that really has no peers, no equals. Sure, you don't have planet landings and all of that stuff, but there's no shortage of things. You can basically build up, you know, a commercial empire, uh, a, a fleet of mercenaries. You can just do missions. It is the ultimate space sandbox game, but no official VR support as of yet. They did mention that it will require a UI overhaul. They're looking into it. So I hope, fingers crossed, X4 Foundations gets VR support. And that's it, guys. There's probably some I've forgotten about, but those are the big ones at the forefront of 2019 for me. Let me know, guys, what you're looking forward to in 2019. Can't wait to see hardware, games, don't care. If you like this video, hit like. If you haven't yet, you like this video, you like what you've seen, hit the subscriber button, guys, uh, and welcome aboard. And as always, cheers and have a fantastic 2019.